Moving on to the implementation of W linked list. It's similar to our singular linked list with a few changes. I will be opening my NetBeans IDE and coding the implementation of the W linked list. So first, like we did with our last example, we created a Java class and we're creating a W linked list. So I can name this as W linked list demo. And our class will be created. So we have our class, public class W linked list demo. First things first, like we did in our last example is the main method. So I'm just leaving some space for our main method, which will come later on in our program. So inside our public class W linked list demo, I will be declaring variables. So first we have our size variable. And we also have a node for both the head and tail. Inside our constructor, well, it doesn't know what node is yet because I have to make the node class. So I will be doing so. So we have a private class node. And we're going to be using object for our data because I want to refer, I want to make sure that I can put any type of data types that I would like. I can put strings, doubles, integers, booleans. I'm not just restricting it to just integers. So I'll be using object data. We also have variables for our node as both previous and next. So this is our private class node. Then we're going to create and instantiate the variables in our constructor, assign our data to our D variable, and we're going to be assigning that previous and next um, node values to null in the starting. We're assigning it to null because it is not linked yet. Our list is not linked yet, so it will be null. So just a note to self, link is not, or list is not linked yet. Object of class node for our head. Next, I'll go back into our W link list and I will be doing coding the is empty method. So our return type for is empty will be boolean. So public boolean is empty. And like the same in the last program, I will be returning size is equal to zero. And I'm getting an error over here because I'm missing the return statement. So our return statement will be size is equal equal to zero. Next, I will also create a method for our size. And I'm also getting error here because of this extra curly bracket. You want to make sure where you're placing your curly brackets. As that is crucial when coding. So next, we're going to be creating our method, which is known as size, which has a return type of integer. And the size method is going to be returning the number of nodes. So now we have our is empty and size method. Now I'll be creating the add first method. So I will create public void add first. Because this is the method that we'll be using to add 
numbers or objects to our list first. Then we'll also have a public void add last method. So eight, a new node. So node, new node is equal to new node and we're going to be using an object of data, which we have to make sure we declare here. So object data. So next I'll be checking if our head is null. If our head is equal to null, I'm going to assign, this is the assignment operator, and I'm going to say the head is equal to our new node. And also our tail is equal to our new node. And make sure to always put your semicolons. Otherwise, or else, our new node, the next one will be assigned to our head. So this is adding the first element or object into our W link list. Next, we're going to be checking our previous number from our head. So the previous, the head is the first node. We'll check our previous one and assign it to our new node. So head dot previous is equal to new node. And we also want to include a line of head is equal to new node. So this is the else condition, and this is the if condition for our add first method. So, and we're going to increase our size of our list. So just to recap, I'm going to scroll back up to the beginning of the code. And I really want to emphasize that this head and tail variables are not of type integer, it's an object of the node class, which we've defined down here, which is an object of the node class. And in our add first method, we have if head is equal equal to null, we're going to assign our head and tail to that new node variable. Next, I'll be working with the add last method. So the add last is going to, after adding the element, will make the previous pointer null. So the add last method I'll just put my mouse here. And the add first method is going to be after adding the element, we'll make the previous pointer null. That will be for the add first method. Moving on to our uh, last method, we also have to create the parameter of our object data. And we're going to be doing the same declaration for our new node. But this time we're going to check if our tail is null. We're going to be assigning our head to our new node and our tail to our new node, which is also what we did for our first method. Otherwise, or else, our tail, the next one, we will assign to our new node. And our new node that we just created, the previous one will be assigning to our tail. And finally, we will assign our tail to our new node. Similar format to our ad first, just a little difference changes we're making. And we're also going to increase our size variable. So, our add first and add last methods are both completed. Now, how will it print? We need to have some kind of displaying method that will print for both 
displaying forward and displaying backward. If our head is equal to null, we are going to say that it linked list is empty. Else, we are going to print our forward traversal. And I also just wanted to add, I will be completing the remove method after display forward and display backward. So for forward traversal, we are going to use a while loop, which will come in. So we're going to create a new node and set it to our head. So while our current node is not equal to null, so if our current node is not equal to null, I will print in the current node dot data. And I will also be assigning our current node to our next one, so current node.next. So this completes our while loop for our display forward method. If we would like to display backwards or traversing backwards, it will be the similar logic. So public void display backward. And we're going to check if our head is null, our link list is empty. So we can just take this code and put it down here. And then we'll print our backwards traversal. So backwards traversal. So backward traversal is in our else statement. And we're going to be assigning our current node to our tail. Our current node is equal to tail because that's the starting of our backwards traversal. Whereas over here in our display forward, our current node is starting at head because we're going to be traversing forwards. So node current node is equal to tail. While we're now we're going to put a while loop. While our current node is not equal to null, so the same condition. We are going to print the current node dot next current node dot data. And we're also going to have current node is equal to current node dot next. But instead of next, we want to refer to our previous one because we're traversing backwards. So this completes our display backwards method and display forward. And next, I'll be moving on to our remove method.
So in our remove method, I have an error because I did not write my return statement. So in our remove method, we're going to account for all of the potential or possible cases that could happen. So if our head is equal to null, we're going to return false. Our next potential case is checking the data in our head. And if, if it does hold data, we're going to check if the head variable or node is equal to the tail node. And if this is so, we're going to be setting the head, assigning the head to null and the tail to null. Basically, in other words, we're moving that data variable or data value. Next, we have an else condition. And it's going to have the next variable of our head. And it's also going to have the previous and setting it equal to null. And if this is true, we're going to decrease the size, which is removing. And we're going to be returning true. And then we're going to return false. I've also added the semicolons to get rid of the errors. The next condition I'll be checking is if the element is in between. So I've added the while statement or while condition. The while loop will also check if the current node is not equal to null and the current node is not equal to tail. And then we'll be checking if our current node that we are at, if the data value is equal or equal to data, we'll be assigning our current node dot previous dot next to our current node dot next. And we'll also be assigning our current node dot next dot previous to our current node, the previous one. And then if this is true, we'll decrement the size variable while also returning true. So I just added the current node is going to be assigned to the next one. And then we'll also have an is condition for our next condition. And I want to emphasize that we will be closing the while loop before the if statement, if tail.data is equal to data. We're checking if our data in the tail is equal to the data. 
and we're going to assign our tail to the previous one and our next tail value to null. So I've just made the change of putting the curly bracket after current node is equal to current node.next. I just realized that that was not included inside our while loop. So I've just made that change. And then we're going to also decrease the size and return true. So this completes our remove method. So I'm just double checking my remove method and the curly brackets of the while loop, our current node equals current node.next will go inside our while loop and outside the if condition. So it looks like our remove method is looking good and I'll be calling the methods in the main method. So I'll create the object of our class So I've added 10, 3, and hello world. So I put integers and one string. Now I'll be using the add last method. And we are allowed to include 10, 3 strings, integers, because we declared data as an object and not as an integer or just a string. And now we're going to display forward and display backward our linked list. I'll also check if it's true or false if the stack is empty or not. Then also the sides. So I've printed if the stack is empty or not and the sides, and I'll execute the program. So the forward traversal is hello world 3, 10, 12.5, and backward traversal is 12.5, 10, 3, and hello world. I'll just check if everything is correct. So we have in our code list.add first 10. 
But now the line 184 at verse 3 is going to override the 10. And line 186 is going to override line 184. So if you scroll up on our compiler, we have forward traversal, hello world. Hello world is printed out first because in our code, we added the first, we called add first method, but we called it lastly. So that's why it's going to show first in our compiler. It looks like it's not removing 12.5. I'll just double check the remove method. So I will just run the program and see if I'm getting the expected output. Forwards, backwards. Yup, everything is looking great. I removed 10 from the link list and my output is as expected. Thank you everyone for watching. Happy coding and please subscribe and give this video a thumbs up for more coding content. Have a great day.